Recently I've been listening to the record by Sharon Van Etten called Epic. And it's a uh, it's a great record from start to finish. I've been listening to this musician for a few years now and getting to hear the growth from the writing and the performative aspects of her work. From records that she just recorded in garage band in her parents' basements to this really accomplished studio work. Epic really represents how I grew from playing solo to getting comfortable to collaborating and the songs that I honed by learning how to play live. I got my start at Zebulon in Brooklyn before I ever moved there. I remember commuting from New Jersey, trying to figure out how I was going to ever move to New York because I was the shyest kid in the world. You know, I'd just come from an abusive relationship in Tennessee, and I kind of moved back home with my parents with my tail between my legs, and I was really lost. And I played music because it made me feel better. I had a couple friends in New York already, and they helped me find my legs. I happened to meet one of the most pivotal friends <laughs> in my life, Kit Malone, who took me under his wing, and he showed me around Brooklyn and Williamsburg, which then was really exciting and fun, and it felt like the Wild West. It's about 2005, 2006. I was playing open mics and I was recording in my bedroom and my laptop internal speakers and that was all I needed to feel better but when Kip first brought me to Zebulon in Williamsburg I felt like I had entered a whole other universe. It felt really warm and exciting and inviting and the music that they played there was so diverse. They were just so open to all different walks of life. And after the first night I played there, meeting Joss and Jeff, they, they told me that I could play there any time that I wanted to, and I could curate my own night there if I wanted. A good thing for the artist, uh, Zebulon, is like, there was no that pressure of money. And lots of artists were using Zebulon as a kind of a laboratory or they were like coming to try something, or they were like artists to just get out of the basement or the bedroom and have the first show. And we were totally okay with that, and we liked the idea to give a chance. So yeah, we welcome a lot of people who uh, they were like, okay, this is a good place to, there's no pressure, there's no like, you know, I can be myself, I feel comfortable and very intimate and I think that's, uh, that, was, that was a great meeting with uh, Sharon. But she was very like right away so like it's sensitive. Magnetism, you know, yeah. some, you know she's, that's it, you know, we could, we, could, uh, we could feel it. She was doing something uh, uh, strong. Over the course of a few years, my friend circle grew. I got the confidence to move to New York and take the plunge. I became part of this really tight-knit community of musicians that existed back then. And we had revolving doors of bands coming and going, playing shows, and Zebulon was the heart of that. It's really crazy to think that it's been 10 years. It does not feel that long. The fact that the show is happening at Zebulon is so beautiful. It's kind of like a homecoming. And when Sharon would play there, the room would fall completely silent and tune into this just mystical voice that was coming from the stage. She just has that effect. She still has that effect, even playing sold out arenas. That's always been the case for Sharon. A lot of the songs I performed early on at Zebulon led up to the album that became Epic. Through Kip, I met Jeffrey Kish, who helped me flesh out the song Love More, who would help me dissect songs in ways that I just, I never thought about music when, it, when it's more production and it's more about how to make it onto a record. 
I remember speaking to Sharon at the time because she was asked to do the Weather Vane music in Philly with Brian McTeer. She asked me to go over a few songs with her. I think like maybe the stars lined up for her because she was definitely becoming more confident with what she was doing musically. And I think that was like a good catapult to jump to everything that came after that. She Keeps Bees was another band that I met during that time. Jessica Laird, Lee, and Andy LaPlante. Um, they played all over the record, drums and vocals, and they were a band that I felt accepted by, and we played so many shows together. I remember us getting there in the evening before we were gonna record the next day, and Brian and Sharon had done the skeleton, the bones of a couple songs. We were kind of like, mm, well, I'm glad I'm here, but I don't know if we're really needed. <laughs> don't know if we should, we're just gonna hang then. She's so giving as an artist that she shares these, you know, these gems, this beauty so um, easily with other people. And uh, you, it makes you just feel more confident. All throughout my entry into New York, I just felt this acceptance from everybody and learned to speak up about who I was and what I did. I was interning at Bada Bang Records in Brooklyn. My friend Alicia, who I met in Tennessee when I lived there, it was her first job in New York and she and Ben Goldberg hired me as an intern. I didn't tell Ben that I was a musician because I didn't want him to think that I had an ulterior motive by wanting to work there. I just wanted to learn how to do it myself. I remember when he heard I was playing my first show that he was pissed that I didn't tell him about it. He's like, you're fired if you don't tell me about your next show. He's like, you, you get, like, don't hide that from me, it's okay. As we were recording Epic, as we, as she was recording Epic, I didn't record Epic. I went down there once. It was actually a really great experience because every day someone else would come in, someone else who was a friend who would come in and contribute something. And it was just so warm and so kind. I mean, that was also thanks to Brian's studio. It was no surprise that the result of that was this collaboration of music that came out that was just came out so naturally and it had such emotion right on the surface because that's the way the room actually felt like even when they were deep in work. Hi, I'm Brian McTeer and this is my studio, Minor Street Recordings, where my partner Amy Morrissey and I recorded Sharon Van Etten's record, Epic, 10 years ago. Uh, that record was really important for us. We made it in 11 days and that includes the first two days being the recording of Love More for my nonprofit Weather Vane Music's documentary video series, Shaking Through. That recording with Sharon was really fun. We all learned a lot of things. I think some of my favorite memories really have to do with, you know, the process of becoming friends with somebody. And Sharon sent me some chords and some songs and I went down that same day and did the bass in a couple hours on the whole record. I mean, there's only bass on like four songs or something. It was so clear that something special was happening and that these songs would be, once they were in the world, just be floating around inside people's heads. It's just been incredible to watch her career blossom and grow and watch her stay so true to herself. Um, she's still that same person that I met 10 years ago with this sort of quiet wisdom and power. Yeah, happy birthday to Epic. And, uh, you know, I think we'll still be talking about this record, uh, you know, 20 years from now. Making the album Epic was pivotal for me because I had never played with a band before. I learned very quickly about trusting people again. I think that's big, like being a survivor is letting people in again and moving forward. And Zebulon, Bada Bing Records, everyone I met for my entrance into New York helped me do that. 
And I remember you calling me and sort of nervously explaining before you sent me the initial recordings for the songs that would be on Epic that, you know, it sounded really different and um, it sounded really big and you had been listening to a lot of Fleetwood Mac and you were thinking about calling it Epic, which it was funny at the time and I remember sitting on the porch and listening to these songs just thinking like no wow this is real this is really big and this is really full bodied and very grounded and it felt really pivotal this is my first performance with my band since covid this is my first time being in Zebulon since they opened my family and I moved to L.A. just this past year, and just as we were sinking our teeth in, and I finished tour lockdown, <laughs> the universe is funny like that sometimes. I do wish that this could be more of a party. <laughs> it's hard for musicians right now, it's hard for venues. <laughs> When it came time to talk about celebrating Epic's 10 year, there was no other venue that I wanted to do it in because they shaped who I am and gave me the confidence to even come as far as I have. The venue is not just a club where people go and listen to music and drink. Like it's where ideas happen. It's where personalities take shape and where musicians meet and collaborate and grow and change and thrive and yes it's harder in this in this quarantine space but I think we just have to continue to figure out how to fuel each other until we can all be in the same room together again because we all have to figure out new ways to connect. So we are about to perform Epic from front to back. We're trying to make it feel as live and raw as possible while also making it sound and look as good as possible so that you can feel here with us. I want you to feel the band. I want you to feel the venue. I want you to feel all the people that made this happen because there are many. I want you to know we put our hearts into this, we put a lot of time into this so that you can get the best experience possible. I'll try not to cry during the show. Hopefully I got that out now, but just know that we love you and we're so happy that you're here to celebrate. <laughs>
You won't.
Well, that was really fast. <laughs> um, hi. I know there are people watching out there. 
and um, I feel like I'm on a space station with some of my best friends um, here and apart, and it's weird, and it's fun, and it's emotional, and um, I'm trying to keep it together, but I saved it for the last song to talk, so I feel like I did pretty well. <laughs> um, At this point in the show, you know how much Zebulon means to me. You know how much my band means to me. You know how much music means to me. You know how much connecting with people is, how important that is right now. And um, I'm trying to bring us all together somehow in this weird universe we somehow have all been a part of this past year and um my first message to you is I I hope you're all doing okay and um I hope your families are healthy um seeing a lot of ums I want you to know that we've taken every precaution in doing this show everybody's wearing a mask out here and everyone that came here to be a part of this production is not to dramatize it, but yes, everyone's taking a little bit of risk by being a part of this production to make this show happen. So everybody in this room, everyone that is a part of Zebulon, everyone that is a part of my band and my crew, just a general thank you. But for everybody that's watching this right now, I want you to know that you're directly supporting Zebulon and you're directly supporting my band and everyone that was a part of this production. Zebulon, if you did not exist, I would not be here today. I would not have the music career that I've had, and I would not have built the confidence that even though I am still insecure to this day, I would not have been able to get a band together and have a show and felt the support if I didn't have your support early on. And I know a lot of artists feel that way about Zebulon, and a lot of artists feel that way about independent venues that are in so much danger right now. And so we are here to, yes, celebrate the 10-year anniversary of Epic, but I chose to have it here at Zebulon because I, as a person and as an artist, grew and felt lifted by them at the very beginning. So Joss and Jeff, thank you for ever bringing me into your world and the people that you surround yourself with and the community that you nurture from Brooklyn to LA. Thank you with my whole heart and beyond. Thank you for bringing my band here and this whole amazing group of people because uh, this is our first time having a having a band live during COVID. Um, and it means so much more to me than I'm able to articulate right now. <sighs> okay. All right. Um, that being said, sending so much love to everyone that's here connecting with this performance. We have one more song for you. But before we play that song, I want you to meet the band that's making it happen right now, these amazing artists, performers, friends. Charlie Damsky. Mia Folick. Jorge Balbi. Zach Dawes. Sean O'Brien, thank you all for taking risks for being here and helping us see this record out live for the first time. And thank you all for being a part of it. Camera, Zebulon, Matt Littlejohn, everybody, I love you all. Thank you so much. Here's our last song.
to the